Hi everybody. In this video, I want to look at a topic that was brought up in the comments section. It was a question about light and how light was leaking through the walls and ceilings of their architectural render. And so we want to go ahead and take a look and see if we figure out what's causing this and how you might go about fixing it. And we are going to use Lumion and D5. And let's take a quick look at our SketchUp model just to see how it's constructed and where we may run into some issues. Okay, everybody, before we look at the issue, let's just take a quick look at our SketchUp scene just so we have an idea of how this was constructed. So I've got a pretty basic room here, just a box. And what's really important to note here is that the walls in this structure do not have any thickness. And so when you're working in SketchUp, for example, or Blender or 3D Studio Max or any other modeling program, your walls will oftentimes effectively just resemble something a little bit like this. You'll have built a rectangle and then added another rectangle, or maybe you're using edges or you know lines or vertices, however you want to construct. But the important thing to note is that the walls have no thickness. Okay, so if we take a quick look at our scene, I'm just going to hide this right here and turn off the view hidden geometry. It's just a pretty basic sort of setup with some models from the warehouse and, you know, kind of a wall ceiling kind of setup with some windows to let some light in. There's nothing crazy complicated here. All right. Now, with that being said, let's bounce over to Lumion. And here we are. Currently using the Lumion version 2023. Um, I am using the student edition, and there's a simple reason for that. Uh, Lumion is the software that I teach. It's one of the classes I teach is architectural rendering. And we use a SketchUp to Lumion to Photoshop workflow. And there's a couple of simple reasons for that. One is that Lumion is available very easily to educational institutions, which is really, really nice and it is a fully featured version. Also, students tend to find it very easy to pick up and it's very accessible. Now, I'll probably do another video later on on sort of the 2023 quirks, um, but for now, let's just go back to our original issue. Here's our scene with some Lumion materials applied, and you can actually see the issue already before we even get into the rendering, and it's that you can see that we've got light is actually seeping through our walls, which is not ideal. And if we were to go ahead and render this, I'm going to move myself out of the way here and I'm going to click on the, let's go to the photo mode here. Too. Um, I will get into basically the, you know, the ray tracing thing in a second. But this is a pretty standard, like um, sort of just using the realistic settings within Lumion, using the original raster engine. Now, please note the raster engine has been updated for Lumion 2023, and the results are going to be better, I think, than 12.5, the older version. But you're still potentially going to run into issues. You can kind of see it right here. If I move, yeah, there we go you can see a very obvious seam or edge right here, and light is actually bleeding on through. Now, I'm gonna just pause here for a second, and I wanna show you the results of a number of different renders. By the way, I have no artificial light set up in the scene. I am lighting this with exterior light only. Now, this is the approach that I picked up from Greg Miles on Luminous Labs which is to light your Lumion scenes really f just as much exterior light as possible coming into the scene. Uh, there's, there's only one light in the scene, which is actually just on this lamp right here, but it's not really contributed anything to it. And so what's going on is we are still getting just natural ambient light from the exterior coming in, which is not ideal. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause here really quickly, and I'm going to pull up some renders that I've done before, and we'll take a look and see kind of what's going on and how we might go about fixing it. All right, I'll be right back. All 
All right, everybody. So here we are. I've done basically four different renders here with the issue that we've already identified. Um, these renders, please note, are done on sort of the lower resolution. I wanted to kind of do this pretty quickly. And so they're done on like the 1080, just the standard HD. So not the desktop and definitely not the poster size print. Okay, so here we have our bog standard Lumion render. This is using the raster engine. And again, the SketchUp walls here do not have any thickness. And that is really important. And you can see right here, we're getting that light bleed or light leak happening. Now you can kind of see it. 90% of people probably wouldn't really notice this, I don't think. And um, if you've been using Lumion at all, there's a very good chance that you really don't use it that much for interior rendering. My view is that Lumion strengths were always exterior rendering and how it handled effectively light in the scene. And so, you know, there's a good chance you, you probably already encountered this. And there's also a good chance that Lumion wasn't your go-to interior renderer anyway. Now that's totally fine. Every render engine has its strengths and weaknesses. However, um, I have done a lot of interior renderings and my students will have done them too. And this pops up quite a bit. It's not as noticeable here right now, but you saw earlier when we tilted the camera and we looked at just a different wall, for whatever reason, you could see that tract of light running straight down through it. So it definitely can be an issue. All right, so how do we go about fixing this? Well, the first thing to note is if we actually, I'm gonna pop out of this, if we turn on the ray tracing, it completely disappears. Now, I'm not entirely sure of the technical reason for this. It probably goes back to the way the ray tracing works in pretty much any either ray or path tracing engine, which is just a more accurate light calculation. And when you do that, it recognizes effectively, I believe, where the geometry meets and it understands that that forms basically a seamless um, really kind of like area or join. And I think it just goes back to the way light is interpreted. But looking at the ray trace model here, um, the ray trace scene, you can see we don't run into that problem at all. Now, if you have used Lumion 2023 at all a little bit, you are aware that by default, it does turn off things like hyperlight. Global illumination has actually gone entirely, which yay, because that was kind of, you know, an outdated throwback. But hyperlight is turned off, reflection planes are turned off, and I believe some of the things like shadow, um, like omni shadow and things like that, things that you would have used before to maybe put shadow back into the darker crevices, those are gone as well. And you can see all in all, I mean, the areas that should be shadowy right here look pretty good. I think they look quite nice, in fact. And so you can kind of see, I'm sorry, I bounced back to test one. Let me just bounce back really quickly here to the test rate, 150, there we go. You can see here, it just looks a lot, lot better. And please note again, I am rendering these on a very, very low resolution. This is not even the, the 3K or you know the 4K image size. It's just the sort of medium HD version. But you're not getting any of that light leaking through the surface whatsoever. And I think definitely a much better way to do your interior shots. In fact, I don't think going forward, anyone who's using the 2023 20, version and going forward, I don't think you're you're going to ever use the rasterized interior rendering again. In fact, it seems very likely that the ray tracing in Lumion is intended to offset the weakness, which was interior renders. Now, in saying that, though, not everyone is is able to do this. If you're not running a RTX graphics card, Lumion intentionally ships with both raster and ray tracing, which means that you're still going to be faced with the issue of light bleed. And this is also true if you're just using the older versions of Lumion. So how do we go about fixing it if you can't use the ray tracing? Well, I did two other tests and to show you what I mean, let's bounce back to SketchUp. Now, remember our SketchUp model has no thickness on the walls and there are two ways then that we can go about fixing this light bleed issue. Now, the first is quite simply this, go to your model, Hit P to bring up the push-pull tool. 
tap control to use the alternative push pull which will add new geometry while keeping the original intact and left click and just drag this fella out and then i'm going to do the same just over here and over here as well you can also do it on this side really anywhere where you can add that extra geometry hopefully without moving the original underlying geometry and to see how that actually looked let's go back to a test now i moved the camera a little bit because i wanted to show the ceiling in this shot too but here we are with the original walls and you can see that join so by rights using the normal just sort of like sketchup model with the thin walls and the rasterized engine you'd actually be getting light seeping through but by adding thickness to the walls in other words adding more geometry to the scene you can see that that is no longer an issue so that's i think one way to go about fixing this and i think that's probably the optimum way to go about fixing this now i also did one other test very simply where instead of adding thickness to the overall geometry i just went in and kind of blocked it a little bit so basically just building a very simple shape like this and using the normal push pull or the alternative push pull doesn't really matter let's just lift up a wall here remember our light is coming from the outside here right here and so and yet we're still getting a lot of the light leak coming from really the corners of the other you know really these parts of the building so if we block that and so what we did back in uh lumion went ahead and did another test here and this was exactly everything was exactly the same just with a new wall added i also went ahead and cranked up the light as much as possible you can kind of see here you do have a pretty good result here it's very comparable to adding thickness to the walls and all in all I'm kind of pretty happy with this it is still looking a little bit flat i think i did crank up the actual light in the scene to try and just see how this would work to get as much light as possible in there and you do still get a little bit of very kind of strange light behavior in places and so if i had to pick and choose between which of these is the way to go um you know I, I really think just it's just adding thickness seems to be the right approach you, you may run into problems with this though because a lot of sketchup users the way that we tend to build walls and windows is going to be a little bit like this here's my wall I, i'm going to go to the warehouse and we'll grab for example a window i'm just going to just do uh just type in just regular window here and we tend to place them i'm just going to download the very first one i get and we tend to place them just like right like that and one of the benefits to that um it's not working in this model's case but is that sketchup tends to carve out basically a perfect spot for your window and it does this really efficiently if your walls have no thickness so let's let's do a quick example here control c and i'm going to just do a control v and here we go place that and there there's a perfect example of it working correctly and so you can see this is how a lot of us learn to use sketchup and so the idea then of you know starting your build with walls with thickness is kind of a little bit problematic and so when we try and replicate this let's get up hang for a second control c and control v you'll notice well it actually is working here now which is kind of nice but there's the issue light is not going to pass really through this and even though this really really lovely colby uh component here is carving out a correct hole for the window it's not going to work entirely right so how i generally teach this and this is kind of the approach i take with my students is is to carve out a hole for the window first and i'm going to use that push pull and there we can see and then control c and control v will paste our window and then i'll move the window to where it should be and then i'll use push pull to just close out kind of the gaps here and obviously this is you know just kind of a very rough example here but you can get a pretty nice result by doing this and your walls will come effectively with thickness so you don't necessarily have to worry about going in afterwards and adding that to your walls
Okay, with that being said, hopefully that helps you out. I did mention that we're going to look at D5 too. And I sent the exact same scene over to D5 Render. Now, I was not able to recreate the issue with light leaking through the walls. Um, I didn't actually bother like cleaning up the scene or adding materials or anything to it. This is just the straight kind of straight up uh, SketchUp model sent right over. And no matter how I fiddled with the environment or changed it or tweaked it, I, I wasn't really able to get that same light leak effect. Now I know from, for example, the Facebook groups and the, and the forum that it has happened to some people, but I would be willing to bet, again, the issue goes back to walls having no thickness. And so my argument would be the first way to fix this, the first thing you should try is to give a little bit of thickness to the walls and see if that fixes it. If that doesn't fix it, I would strongly suggest changing where your light is coming from. In other words, if you've got a really, really strong light, and I'm using, you know, if we just grab the Sunrise HDRI, the default one here, and you can see right now that the light, the sun is coming from to the right. But if I was to rotate that and the sun is perhaps coming right here, and I'm still doing an interior shot, it, I feel like that's more likely to give rise to this basically light leaking through your walls because it's right behind the geometry and it's the light is, I think, going straight at that. And you, you just increase the odds that that's where you're going to get light leakage coming from, as opposed to, again, trying to light your scenes with light that comes in through windows and just sort of bounces around internally. Um, that's just a theory. I have no evidence to support that, but I, I do think at the end of the day, wall thickness is the right way to go about fixing this. Okay, um, with that being said, if you've made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching, and I hope this helps if you have this problem. And um, thank you so much for leaving likes and comments, and for those of you who go ahead and subscribe, it's been really great to see the subscriber numbers go up, and to see some of the comments that people have left saying that the channel was helpful to them. Okay, um, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.